In 500 AD, a Neanderthal man is playing around with his son Grendel when they're suddenly approached by King Hrothgar of Danelands and his soldiers. These warriors see the Neanderthal as a troll and have come to kill him, so the man hides Grendel on the edge of a cliff before confronting the soldiers. Unfortunately he's easily overpowered by torches and arrows, and he falls off the cliff to his death. Then Hrothgar sees little Grendel hiding, but decides to spare him and goes away with his men. Afterward, Grendel goes to the beach and pulls at his father's body, but of course he doesn't move. Accepting the sad truth, Grendel takes a sword and cuts his dad's head off to take it home. Many years later, Grendel has grown into a burly man just like his father. Grendel still has the head around, and he misses the real sight of his father so much that he goes to the top of a mountain and hits his head as a ritual to swear revenge. Then he starts searching the area until he finds the small village where Krothgar and his men live. Later in the evening, Grendel sneaks around and surprises a soldier from behind, quickly knocking him out before heading into the Great Hall. The next morning, Krothgar enters the hall to discover all his warriors have been murdered and decapitated. Meanwhile in Jiatland, Beowulf appears in the sea and rushes to the shore where he meets a fisherman who helps him get an eel off his leg. The fisherman shares his dinner with Beowulf, who turns out to be a famous hero. Beowulf pretends he doesn't care much for fighting, but he remembers a recent battle he had during which he killed multiple people with quick and precise strikes. Eventually Beowulf manages to return home and hears a story about the Danes having trouble with a troll, so he volunteers to go and help. The king of Jiatlin grants him permission to take a few men, and the next morning they sail to Danelands. During the trip, a pale hand reaches out of the water to try to grab Beowulf, but he moves away just in time. Meanwhile in Danelands, Krothgar goes out in the middle of the night and yells for the so-called troll to come and fight him. While Krothgar is distracted, Grendel approaches a guard and kills him before running away. Krothgar sees him and tries to follow him, only to lose him in the darkness. The next morning, Krothgar is too depressed over his losses because he's realized the troll is slowly killing his men to make him suffer. His wife tries to scold him to make him react and be the king his people need to no avail. Moments later, the village prepares a funeral for the fallen soldier and gets the attention of Brendan, a Christian priest. He swears he can scare the evil that haunts this village away, but Krothgar doesn't take him seriously. A few days later, Beowulf and his men arrive in Danelands, and when they're shown around, they notice that the village is falling apart. They also see Selma the witch nearby, but they're warned to stay away from her. Krothgar comes out running when he hears Beowulf is here, revealing that the famous hero was born in Danelands and left when he was eight. To celebrate this reunion, Krothgar throws a special banquet. He is too depressed to offer a proper speech, so the queen guides the toast instead. Then Beowulf promises to kill the troll before he and Krothgar have a talk in private. Beowulf asks if there's anything he should know, but Krothgar swears there isn't. That night, Beowulf and his men stay up to wait for the enemy. Outside, Grendel comes closer to the village and finds Brendan praying, but after sniffing him he decides to not attack him. Next Grendel approaches the great hall and smells the door too, causing it to creak. The warriors hear this and get ready to fight, but when they open the door, they discover Gretel is left without doing anything. The next morning, they interrogate Brendan, who thinks he survived thanks to the protection of his god. Afterward Beowulf's group goes to explore the hills to look for the troll, and on their way up, they almost get hit by a trap made of wood and deer antlers. This makes them wonder if it's actually a troll because a trap proves intelligence. After lots of walking, they find a snowy area, which they can't cross without proper provisions and equipment, so they go back to the village. Meanwhile Grendel is having fun playing with the skulls of the people he's killed. Back in the village, the locals are so scared of the troll that they allow Brendan to baptize them to make them Christian, believing they could survive like he did if they're blessed. Krothgar still prefers their traditional paganism, but he doesn't mind his people making a change if it means it'll improve morale and give them hope. Moments later, Beowulf goes to see Selma, who shares a prediction, the death of the troll will cost a lot to both Danelands and Jiatland. She thinks they deserve it because of what the Danes did to the troll, but she doesn't share the whole story. Afterward Beowulf goes to Krothgar and asks a few questions to learn that the troll hasn't killed children, women, or old men, meaning it fights with a clean heart. Beowulf can't understand how this all started and it worries him, which causes Krothgar to lose his mind and yell at Beowulf for believing a crazy witch. In the middle of the night, the warriors hear noises and rush outside to fight, but once again they don't see anything. After they go back inside, Grendel comes out of his hiding spot and runs away. The next day, Beowulf sees Krothgar training with the sword and quickly giving up. He cuts in and challenges Krothgar's opponent, defeating him in just a few quick moves as he teaches him that fear always has its place. Next, Beowulf asks Selma to read his future, but her ritual gets interrupted when they hear some weird noises. Beowulf rushes outside and sees Grendel running away, so he immediately gets on a horse and chases him to the mountains. Grendel climbs an area Beowulf can't reach and talks in his own language, but luckily Selma translates for him. It turns out Grendel won't attack Beowulf because he isn't Dane, and when Beowulf yells at him with insults to explain he was born here, Grendel just throws a few rocks at him and leaves. A confused Beowulf turns to Selma, who explains Grendel won't fight him because Beowulf did nothing wrong to him. 
On their way back, Beowulf demands to know why the troll was outside Selma's hut, so she explains that she actually likes Grendel because since he's around, men from the village don't come to take advantage of her anymore. Beowulf is shocked to hear the troll has a name, adding to the clues that don't add up. Afterward Beowulf goes to see Krothgar, explaining he thinks Grendel is waiting for him and his men to leave before attacking again. Krothgar thinks the same thing and reveals he's been sick, so his fear finally makes him accept baptism from Brendan. Sometime later, Beowulf notices the local kids throwing rocks at a villager, accusing him of having brought the troll to them. Beowulf sends the children away and the man thanks him by offering to take him to the troll's cave. He didn't say anything before because he had been scared, but now he's baptized he feels safe. Beowulf and his men take their boat to the beach and climb over a hill, where they find Grendel's cave on a cliff. One of the soldiers tries to climb down but almost falls, so they decide they'll have to come back later with some rope for safety. Before leaving, one of the soldiers pees into the cave, which isn't approved by the villager. During the trip back, Beowulf is shocked to see a kid hiding in another cave. While everyone is distracted, the mysterious pale hand reaches for the peeing soldier to pull him down, but his friends save him just in time. That night, Beowulf has trouble staying awake, and every time he closes his eyes he sees a vision of the cave kid with a sword. The next morning, they're devastated to discover the village that guided them to the cave has been killed. Furious, Beowulf and his men return to the cave and this time they reach it safely with some rope. The place is full of bones and armor from the victims, but Grendel isn't around. One of the men is so frustrated that grabs the head of Grendel's father and destroys it. Afterward Beowulf goes to Selma to ask for her help. When she refuses, he just ties her up and takes her to the hills, hoping Grendel will come out when he threatens her with a knife. However nothing happens, so Beowulf releases Selma and after scolding her for being on the wrong side, he leaves her behind. Meanwhile, Grendel returns to his cave and finds the destroyed skull. After taking a sniff to track down the person who did it, he goes to the top of the hill and does the same blood ritual to swear revenge. When night falls, Grendel appears at the village while everyone sleeps and kills the guard outside by impaling him with a spear. Then Grendel storms into the Great Hall, waking up Beowulf and his men. Chaos ensues as the soldiers try to fight Grendel, who is too strong to be bothered by the attacks of puny humans. He hits the men but doesn't kill them, just pushing them away until he reaches the one that destroyed his father's head. After whispering the word Papa, Grendel finally kills him to have his revenge. A furious Beowulf jumps on Grendel's back to try to punch him, but Grendel just throws him on a table before he starts climbing some chains to reach the upper floor. Beowulf jumps on him again to make him fall and tie something up, but Grendel punches him away and jumps out of the window, only to get caught in the trap Beowulf just set up. Now Grendel is hanging by his right arm, however he doesn't hesitate to grab a spear and take care of the issue. As soon as he frees himself, Grendel runs away, leaving his arm behind. He bleeds all the way to the beach and enters the water, where he dies and is taken away by the pale hand. The next morning, Beowulf points out Grendel didn't do anything to his own until they touched his stuff, so he wants the truth from Krothgar. The king admits he killed Grendel's father for stealing a fish and spared the son out of pity. Afterward Beowulf and his men follow the trail of blood and discover it ends at the sea, so they accept Grendel is dead. That night, the village throws a party to celebrate Grendel's gone, and his arm is kept as a trophy. Beowulf leaves the party to visit Selma and realizes the witch is mourning for Grendel. Selma explains that one night, Grendel found her hut and used the chance to take advantage of her. Since that day, he never touched her again, but started protecting her against villagers. Beowulf decides to try to kiss Selma, but she slaps him as punishment for tying her up and using her as bait. Next she jumps on him and they spend the night getting frisky together. Meanwhile the creature with the pale hand comes out of the sea, revealing to be a sea hag. She comes to the village and quickly kills Brendan before entering the Great Hall to find Grendel's arm hanging on a column, causing her to cry out because Grendel was her son. At that moment the soldiers come after her, but the sea hag easily pushes them away and even kills a few men before leaving with the arm. All this is seen by the mysterious kid from the cave, who rushes to tell Selma about it. Selma seems to know the child and takes him away before Beowulf can see him. The next morning, Krothgar finds the massacre in the Great Hall and immediately yells for action. Beowulf and his men ride to the beach and find a man's head on a spear, causing them to swear revenge. They search the area and enter a cave that appears small at first, however Grendel notices it continues underwater. He takes off his armor and swims until he comes out on the other side of the cave, where he finds Grendel's dead body and a big pile of treasure. The sea hag immediately finds him and attacks him, quickly disarming him before throwing him on the floor to try to kill him. Beowulf tries hitting her with a rock until he pushes the hag off him, then he grabs a sword from the pile of treasure to kill her with a quick strike. Suddenly he sees a shadow but it's just the boy with the sword from his dream, and by watching him Beowulf finally realizes this kid is Grendel and Selma's child. Afterward Beowulf returns to the village, which is going through yet another funeral. It's time for him to leave, but first he visits Selma, pointing out he isn't like the others and hopes they could be together. Selma doesn't agree because he killed Grendel and created an orphan, so he isn't any different from Krothgar. This causes Beowulf to put up a grave marker for Grendel to honor him, 
which the kid sees from afar. Later while Beowulf sails back to his country with his men, he notices Selma and the child saying goodbye with a look. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.